Digital Supply Chain of One. We're here to speak about that with us today. Richard Howells, Vice President for IoT and Digital Supply Chain at SAP. Richard, welcome. Thanks for inviting me, Russell. Richard, let's talk about the, the new business models that you see driving the digital supply chain. What would they be? Walk us through that. Well, we're, we're seeing the industry lines blurring across industries. There are many examples. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, consumer products companies and, and customer-facing companies are really trying to get closer to their customer and provide individualized products for their customers and are moving more into the retail space and selling directly to consumers. Retailers and online re retailers in particular are, are, are similarly challenged. They're trying to get better customer service. They're trying to do one hour delivery in, 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 the, in certain cities in the US at the moment. And to enable that, they're moving into the logistics space and providing their own logistics processes. The logistics service providers are then challenged and need to make themselves relevant from a, from a business perspective and are trying to provide value added services uh, before the products are shipped. So they're really moving into the manufacturing space in some ways where they're putting, for example, 3D printer farms in their facilities and customizing products for their customers just before delivery. And manufacturers are, are also trying to differentiate themselves and are, are looking at different ways to satisfy customers and these demanding customers and and trying to provide a service in many cases instead of selling a product, selling by the hour uh, versus selling a, a physical product. So it, there's many changes going on uh, across all industries, and the key common denominator for solving a lot of these problems are supply chain solutions, and digital supply chain solutions in particular. It appears that uh, we're seeing not just a change across uh, many, many verticals, perhaps all of the verticals, but it looks like the, as one uh, of your partners digitize, then the rest need to fall in line as well. Well, if that's what's happening with business models, let's talk about strategies then. What strategies are you seeing driving this change, this digitization in the supply chain? What would you say? Well, I've alluded to the first one already, and it's all around customer centricity and getting closer to your customer. And regardless of what in industry you're in, you want to be closer and have better visibility of your customers. We have a situation now where customers sometimes know more about your product than you do yourselves. So leveraging and getting closer to actual demand is the first step of having visibility into what the customer is using, how they're using it, and the frequency that they're using it. It's not just uh, having visibility of orders and forecasts, but also of uh, point of sales information and also as we develop smarter products, you can even sense when people are using those products and their, and their usage patterns. Also bringing together unstructured data around demand, such as, point, uh, such as sentiment analysis, uh, all of the social media activities that, 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 that spread like wildfire if a product is, is popular and even faster if it's unpopular. And that then drives and has to drive planning systems, integrated business planning systems, that can respond to these changes in supply and demand, uh, can, can manage a sales and operations planning process, can place inventory where and when it's needed to optimize your, the, your, your costs, and to be responsive and, and to changes in these demand and supply. And finally, we're seeing uh, consumers leveraging omni-channel sales, and they need omni-channel logistics to also uh, match those processes. If I can place an order in seconds on the internet, I want it delivered in the same time, in the same speed. I want it the next day or the next hour. And you have to change your logistics processes from a business perspective to maintain that. Let me put on the hat of one of those uh, supply chain partners and let me just say that I'm, I'm keenly interested in what you've been talking about. But let's drill down. Talk to me about the technologies that are available and that I need to enable the strategies that you've been discussing. Walk me through that. Well, it, it starts off with having uh, predictive business processes. And predictive business processes can, uh, we're, we're, we're leveraging technologies such as the Internet of Things to drive the, the uh, business processes. The Internet of Things is dri driving enormous uh, big data. And there's nothing more frustrating than having lots of information but not being able to do anything about it. So having predictive processes that can drive your, um, your decisions. Maintenance management is a great example of that, and we're seeing uh, a lot of talk around the concept of a digital twin. 
a, f a, f a digital representation of a physical asset or product. And that is really a key enabler for driving new business strategies and new business models around maintenance management and predictive. From a manufacturing perspective, we're seeing the need for, for automated manufacturing processes. We're seeing robotics in, in the workforce in all areas, uh, from, a, from the warehouses where we're getting uh, automated um, forklifts driving around. We're even hearing of drones doing cycle counting at the moment, which is early in, its inf in the infancy of its uh, use, but a, a great use case. And these manufacturing processes, we're seeing be t to better serve that customer of one, that segment of one, to be able to manufacture the lot size of one, we're no longer doing uh, continuous production processes. We're seeing uh, more automated and flexible production cells, which can be moved around and adjusted based on what needs to be manufactured. So we're seeing customers who are driving manufacturing runs where a different product is coming off the line ev every time. No two products are exactly the same. They're all individualized for that customer of one. And finally, we, we need visibility solutions. We need total visibility across, across the business network and across the supply chain. And I need that information in a, in, in for my role. So it's a, 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 a mirror of my business and my job function. Leveraging real-time information, for example, if I'm a logistics manager, I want to see where all the inventory is. I want to see which warehouses have that inventory. I want to see which trucks are moving that inventory around. But I also want to see if I'm performing well. I want to see if, the, if that, that truck is, is on time, whether it's got a maintenance issue, whether the products inside it are, 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 are still good quality. For example, if they're temperature controlled, are all of those products still the right temperature? I also want to bring in unstructured information. I want to take into account weather patterns to know whether I need to reroute shipments. I want to take into account traffic reports for the same reason. I want to know that, that I, so I can estimate that, that truck is going to meet that customer order level at the right time. And a load of technologies are coming together to enable that. The Internet of Things is, a, is an example of, of where we can now capture unparalleled amounts of data and big data. And that big data is used in all sorts of ways. It's used um, for machine learning, for artificial intelligence, to drive robotics. And it, the key is pulling all of that. It's not technology for technology's sake. You can't, you can't be a technology looking for a solution. You have to start with the business problem and then identify which technologies need to come together to solve that problem for that customer or those set of customers at that time. And all of that drives what we're calling the digital supply chain of one. Wasn't that long ago when some of this stuff was merely theoretical, but now we are, in fact, seeing it going on. Richard, I know you're busy here, but you found time to sit down, give us a terrific overview and great drill down into these details. Thank you very, very much. It's been my pleasure, Russell. Russell, thank you. Richard Howes, SAP, speaking to us today about the digital supply chain of one. Thank you for watching.